Now, almost all cells, almost all living creatures on this planet live in symbiosis with other things. So you know what symbiosis means? It means that there's, there's cooperation. You know, it's like we can't live, we cannot live without a symbiotic relationship with a lot of other living beings, okay? First we need our, our healthy bacteria to live with us. Yeah, the probiotics, you know, the, you know, the good bacteria they call it, okay? We're in, certainly in symbiosis with that. We're also obviously in symbiosis with the plant kingdom that we eat, okay? Um, we're in symbiosis with lots of things and all, almost all creatures on this planet are in interaction with other creatures. Without other creatures, they couldn't live. There is an exception to that, though, which is this species of blue-green algae, and probably several other species of blue-green algae, like spirulina most likely, but I'm not speaking about spirulina right now. Okay? This species of blue-green algae is completely, 100% independent. It is not in symbiosis with anything. This is a very important distinction. And in order to have something that is independent and not coordinating or cooperating with other life forms, you have to have certain attributes, okay? It has to be a complete existence in and of itself, okay? That means that it has to have protective enzyme structures, it has to have a cell wall, it has, and everything has to be in a way where it doesn't need anything else. The only thing these blue green algae need is the sun. That's it. And you can't say that about even plants. Plants need much more than the sun. They need their own symbiotic stuff, okay? But this is something, and by the way, the algae kingdom, uh, you hear this word algae and maybe you're thinking um, like slime and you know, like what you think of with this word algae comes to mind, these long strands of stuff, kelp. Yeah? That's not the word algae, okay? This word algae really means fundamental life form. And algaes were the first life forms on the planet. <clears throat> and algae is a life form that existed before the split of plants and animals. Okay? So you're dealing with, these are life forms that are between three and four billion years old. Okay. First life on this planet, about three billion years, what they say. You know, who knows exactly whether, you know, it's three billion or four billion. I'm not sure how they would tell that. Some of those techniques are a little imprecise, especially that kind of vastness. But, but basically, this is the, the, the beginning of life before there was even plants or animals. Okay, well before. Like, you know, for even a billion years, probably, the only thing that existed were single-celled organisms. Okay? As I said, it's through the single-celled organisms that the planet became oxygenated. Okay? So these are the first organized living beings to use chlorophyll, and to have chlorophyll. Okay? And chlorophyll is that capacity of a living being to receive sunlight, combine it with the elements of the air, nitrogen and other things, and to create oxygen, to exhale oxygen, like what this uh, master said. Did anyone hear what the master said, the first meditation I gave, or were you all just sleeping? He says, we rarely think about that in exhaling, we are giving life to the plant kingdom. Remember that little statement? Okay. And so when they exhale, they're giving oxygen out. And so for over a billion, maybe even two billion years, these single-celled um, chlorophyll-based um, organisms were creating oxygen in the planet, which obviously allowed for everything else that's happening now. Okay? Oxygen is a very uh, destructive element. We are very protected, yeah? Like, very protected in our bodies to be even be able to withstand oxygen. Oxygen is you know, it, it's, it basically destroys most things, okay? If you've ever taken up an apple, it's called oxidation, okay? You heard this word, oxidation? You know what rust is? Rust is just oxidation, okay? Even fire is an intense form of oxidation, okay? That's what burning is, okay? Now, chlorophyll itself is 
an element or as a molecule that if you look at it, the structure of it, and then you look at hemoglobin, they're the same structure. Okay, so hemoglobin is that part of your body which um, carries iron or carries oxygen. And the reason why it carries oxygen is that the central molecule of hemoglobin is iron, which is why it's red. The central molecule in chlorophyll is magnesium, which is why it's green. Okay? The reason why hemoglobin works, because hemoglobin, like your, your hemoglobin and your red blood cells are not alive. Red blood cells are not living cells. Okay? The reason why hemoglobin works and the reason why it attracts oxygen, is able to bring oxygen through your body, is because of <coughs> iron. Iron is a magnet. Right? Yes. Iron is a magnet. And so iron, as it's passing through your lungs, is magnetically attracting oxygen onto it. And that's why it works to do what it, the job that it does. Okay? So remember, there's no coincidence, coincidences out there. Yeah? Everything happens for reasons that are related to the material world and the attributes of different things. Metals have certain qualities, so it makes them metal. Okay? So iron is the central element for, or central molecule for hemoglobin. Magnesium is the central molecule for chlorophyll. But if you, looked, if you looked at them actually, they're really identical in their structure. It's remarkable in that chlorophyll is the blood of plants, hemoglobin the blood of mammals. Well, the body there's another really deep book, okay, which has a bunch of information, again, that it's very hard to find this information. I'm going to try to transmit it to you, but also give you the book, okay? This book is called Biological Transmutations. Biological Transmutations. And that author, I'm not sure, but there's only one book titled that, I can promise you. This book is explaining is a radical thing that most medical people completely do not get because it's it's just not it's not obvious at all. Okay, what biological transmutations is saying is that your human body and the bodies of all mammals have the ability to actually change one element on the periodic table to another one. Now that, as I said, if you've studied chemistry, is actually supposedly impossible. Okay? So I'm kind of going to go over your head a little bit and hopefully come back down to your level. But understand that the idea that you can eat one element and have your body change it structurally and then turn it into another one, that actually is not supposed to happen according to mainstream medical understanding, mainstream science. But what biological transmutations proves is that that's exactly what happens. So, for example, one, I think one of the main experiments they gave was they took chickens and the, the shell of a bird, the, the egg shell of a bird is made up of...